Flavin behind me is my 009 narrow gauge layout called the Harland Light Railway. I'm still working on it. It's getting very much closer to being completed. I have functioning track. I've got most of the scenery made, but there's a huge amount of detail still to go into it, which is something I enjoy doing. One of the things I needed to make the whole layout look right was something that everything sits on. So for instance, the manufacturing area here, I wanted it to have cobbles and or sets. And it runs into a harbour, so that all tied in together. But it was quite a big area because it goes underneath my higher level track and into a village. And there is a marketplace in that village, all with the same look effect. So I'm going to show you how I did that. You can't see it here, but at the end here, there is a mountain with a mine and a quarry and an area around it, right the way down to some engine sheds at the front, that needed to be rough to rain. And again, I needed to come up with a way of doing that so that I could then work on it and add things to it to make it look right. So I'm gonna show you how I did the base for all of the ground of this layout. I hope you find it useful. I hope you find it interesting. And I will talk to you again at the end. I'm at my workbench and by chance it's a rather sunny day. So I've actually had to draw the curtains, but there is a bit of sunlight coming through and sometimes it's gonna make it difficult for me to show you things. But this is part of what I've used to create the ground surface on the layout. I had two areas that I wanted to create a surface for. Far end here, where the mountain is, probably can't see it because of the lamps, but, and where the quarry is and where the mine is, and also coming round to the engine sheds. So scruffy area that I wanted to add texture to, to start with and then work on afterwards. This wallpaper, well, if you run your hand over it, it's rough. It's got raised areas. It's got some lights and some darks on it already. There is a little bit of bronzy colour that might just catch the light there. I think you probably can see that. I painted that out a darker grey. Made some white templates out of some just pieces of paper I had left over. Cut them out, stuck them down with Mod Podge. And when they were dry, I put matte varnish on the top. After that, they were ready for me to use as a surface and they look really good. I also wanted to create something all the way along the front here, right along past the harbour, up underneath the bridge here and into the village area. And I wanted those to be cobbles or sets. And I know there are lots of different ways that you can do this, but I wanted to use something that was cheap and cheerful. And I don't like getting my hands dirty. So dust clay or using, um, filler or grout. I didn't want to be doing that. So I came up with this. This is an anaglypta. It's a roll that I bought from B&Q. It was under £10 and it has raised areas that look like cobbles. Quite large cobbles, but I decided not to worry about that too much. And I knew that I could do it without any seams because of course the front to the back was about the length of a, a, a roll of wallpaper. Sorry, width of a roll of wallpaper. First thing I needed to do, paint it grey. You might be able to see the texture a bit better on that. Maybe, maybe not. I used cheap and cheerful children's paint. Pound or so from the range, white and black. Mixed it three parts white to one part black till I got a grey that I wanted. And then I just used a paintbrush, you know, one of these to paint it on. So that's the grey surface. I did wipe it off slightly to see if I could get the right texture. It didn't look right. I did stick it down onto the layout by this point because I needed to keep it somewhere safe. Otherwise it was going to get squashed. 
But then I realised I needed to go one step further. So I did practice this a bit, but then I painted it a much darker colour. And this was done with a wash. Now this wash is one part of the black to 10 parts water. And I just painted it over it to darken it up. What happens there, you see, is that the dark bits get between the bits that you want to stick out as the cobbles. Then, slightly more difficult, I needed to wipe a lighter colour across the surface. And I did this using this, which is a Galleria paint, well used, as you can see, called Pale Umber. I usually use buff titanium, but that was a bit too yellow when I tried it. So this has got like a buff titanium with grey in it already, so I didn't need to mix it myself. Cloth, just a, an ordinary cloth. It's an old cut up t-shirt as it happens. Why put a bit of the paint on it, make it thin like that. And then what I'm doing with it is wiping it over the top. A bit difficult to do it holding it like that. So I'll do it like this. Hmm, I've put a smear, but that doesn't matter because you can paint it out. Yep, there's some splodges. But can you see, you can actually see the raised areas. The splodges don't matter, by the way, because you just wipe them off a little bit or dab them off like that. With Dab it off with a cloth and then you just do a little bit of wash around it when you're finished. But that, oops, that gives you what actually looks like a textured cobbled surface. It gives you highlights and shades, really without too much effort, particularly if I was to put a bit of wash in that space there. And actually, well, now it's down, I've already had because I've shown a couple of videos of it, comments from people about how good it looks. So wallpaper, cheap paint and a bit of time, but not that much time. And although I've got a bit of paint on my hand, it's nothing compared with what I would have got with the clay and so on. This is now dry. This was the sheet I was just showing you how I make it look like cobbles but I did show you that there were some splodges. So I thought I'd show you how you can obliterate the splodges. Uh, this is my black wash. Dry most of it off the paintbrush and do it on its side and do a bit of a wash like that. Backwards and forwards, right? Slide it across a little bit like that, in between the gaps. Okay, as quick as that. Instead of it looking like a yellow splodge of paint, it now looks like light and shade. Okay, you can sometimes look at it a bit more. I can see there's a bit here that could do with some work on it. But the thing is, the world is not uniform, or it very rarely is, and especially when you're looking at an old layout like this of a railway that was at least past its best and has now got people trying to work on it as a heritage. These are the sort of things that happen. It doesn't look immaculate. And by the time I've finished putting weeds and little bits of greenery on it, it'd be unrecognisable. appreciate that using wallpaper is not necessarily everybody's way of wanting to do things. I know I could have used das clay or I could have used grouting and I could have made the whole look that way myself. Combination of problems, running out of time. I don't actually like getting that messy if I'm absolutely honest. So I've chosen a different way of doing it 
and I hope you find it useful. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, share it, give it a thumbs up, comment, all of which I would appreciate. And it will allow me to continue to make videos for you that I hope you will continue to find useful and interesting. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.